Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisu, daifu, miskeen, azal, majahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah that these nights of immense blessings and that the Ursul Mubarak of Sultanul Awliya Ghawsul Azam, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani, Qaddasullah Siru, that these are the immense servants of Allah and represent immense, immense realities in this way and it's an immense blessing from the Divinely Presence whom He wants to guide guides to the way of perfection, to the way in which he blessed his servants, to the way of ishq and muhabbat of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And we were talking today and as a reminder that the greater light of your soul is always in Divinely Presence. That we can't think for a moment that Allah would give us our light, put us on this earth and say, good luck. That only a small portion of that light was sent into your physical body. But the greater, the greater light of the soul is always in the heavenly kingdom and never leaves the nucleus. And that light is always in an association, always being taught, always being dressed. And whatever happening and whatever's being taught here is that this is the way of the servants of Malakut, of the heavenly kingdom. These are not the schools of the dunya and the world of form. So they're teaching you from the heavenly kingdom. There's an association that's continuous as the souls don't sleep and the oceans of eternity. And in that kingdom they sit according to the ranks in which Allah has dressed them, their arwa. And those whom are in tariqahs at least now they have a greater understanding that their souls are always in the association of the shaykhs and in the association of their shaykh. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Continuously teaching them, continuously conveying lights and realities. And whole life's understanding is that that soul and the greater soul, the greater reality is one soul but a drop comes to this earth. So they call it higher consciousness and lower consciousness. We can call it the perfected soul and the drop of the soul in the body, doesn't matter what people want to call it, means that the purpose of life is that that greater reality has been taught all these knowledges and its whole purpose is to communicate with the light Allah threw into your body. So then who's the video game? Huh? Why, why we're so attracted to video games? Because they said in every technology there's a haqqaiq from Allah we like to hold the council, the console or the controller and we like to feel that we're in charge. And we get an avatar 
And we like to even dress him like how we want it to be dressed. We put the beard, a turban and knights and swords. And we move the, the avatar, that which you're made to represent yourself and you engage it in everything. But its haqqaiq is that we are the avatar and the greater soul is playing us on this earth. And Allah was there ever a time you were something not remembered? Means you're continuously connected. So in perfection that soul learns, the greater soul is always in an association from the nucleus, from the power. It can't be devoid of power, otherwise where are you getting your power? So it's continuously learning. Its purpose in perfection, then we can see how far we are off of perfection, was that we were supposed to land on this earth in this vehicle we call a body. And Allah took from that light, threw it into that body. And we were supposed to find out, what are my coordinates? So He's playing the game up there, go left, go right, pray. Then again, do this, do this, pray. And it was supposed to be under the command of the greater consciousness that's connected to the Divine. And in the way that Allah wanted it is that we should have been listening to the inspiration of our greater reality. Like astronauts on Mars and they're taking telecommunication from NASA and say, yes we heard. Because shaitan also likes to imitate like very far distances and they can communicate. They can't communicate from one state to another state without interference and interruption. But in the heavenly kingdom the greater soul, the greater reality is continuously trying to inspire, go left because it sees lahul mafuz. The greater soul sees what Allah has written, says that Allah has written for us, today you're supposed to go here, today you're supposed to pray this. Today you're supposed to and it was all based on ibadah. And had we listened in perfection, samina watana, left, right, left, right, left, right, all the rizq and all the blessings would have flown upon the avatar on earth, what we call insan, because Allah's rida and satisfaction would have been upon that servant. The one whom listens to their soul listens to Allah that becomes Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum because they're in the associations of Allah's Divinely power under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad So every isharat, every guidance, every light, every reality is coming and our job was to be a good avatar and play, listen. And that's why our way is what? Samina wa atana. We heard, what did you hear? You were supposed to hear your greater reality and we obey. And this was the game that we were the avatar and my soul in heaven was the one controlling. And sits in the association, learns a reality, sends a signal down, go to left, now do this and now do that. Then Allah introduced shaitan that Go after that avatar on earth and shaitan's role is to confuse our signal. So every time we want to hear our greater reality, shaitan's like, <laughs> make you busy, make you confused, make you every type of distraction until you're not going left and you're not going right. And there was a time where there was no TV. And there was no telephone and there was no internet and you would sit and what would happen? You would hear yourself and your inspirations and good character and you would hear the outer people teaching you have good manners and, and be disciplined and give you outer coordinates, inner coordinates and they were following Allah's way. And the system was designed to, to listen and to follow and obey the higher command. As a result of insan being distracted by the immense amount of negative energy, they no longer sit to 
to listen. They're continuously busy, they have to look at everything, they have to hear everything, they have to be distracted on their phones, they have to be continuously bombarded. For what purpose? If they don't understand the reality, they don't understand why the shaykh is talking about being bombarded because you were supposed to be able to hear your soul. Not the one inside you confused with dirtiness but the greater reality that is purified and perfected. When Allah describes, although they wish to extinguish the light, they can never extinguish it because it's not in yours to extinguish. The light is always with Allah He didn't give it to us, did not entrust it to us because we didn't reach our ahad and our covenant. That was the concept of the bayat. When Allah wants a servant to reach their real light, he guides them to their bayat and their initiation. Why? So that they can complete their covenant with Allah Otherwise it wasn't holding hands, it was about the covenant that Allah is connect the servant back to their reality. And the shaykh is holding his two hands, holding one to the reality and one to the servant. And then disciplines and trains them, come back to your coordinates. He's a facilitator of, of mulk and malakut because your hand not reaching, your understanding is not reaching. The reality of the shaykh is to hold the hand in the reality because they exist with that, we'll get to how that happened. And as a result hold the hand on earth and that's why Allah says, Allah's hand is upon their hands. He's going to facilitate the connection because they disconnected from their reality. So in electronics and, and when you have an electrician comes, they make like a cable to connect two conditions until they can bring the wires safely together. They're going to jump from one side, jump to this side, make the connection so the flow of energy is coming. But the job is to connect the cable. So the one whom has been connected, seclusions, disciplines and through their guidance, nobody ever connected alone. So they don't have shaykhs, they're not in zikr, they're not connected. There can be imaginal and illusionary connection, there's no way they're going to reach into the heavens and there's no way they're going to fight the shaitans whom are blocking their storm. Say, if I can't get satellite I'm going to make it happen. No, you're not going to make it happen because when the storm comes you have no satellite. So the concept that Allah gives to the shaykhs is, no they're going to come and as a result of their madad and their support that Allah is supporting upon them, shaitan runs from you in their presence. If you're physically in their presence, shaitan is running waiting outside to block your connection again. As soon as the association starts again shaitan runs and the connection's there. As soon as you make your madad and learn how to make your tafakkur and your contemplation, what happens? The energy comes like a portal and pushes shaitan away so that that five minutes, four minutes, three minutes of meditation again facilitating the connection. And when they feel that you're experienced enough what happened? They go in for seclusions. Forty days they're in that training of connected and they're connected and they're connected and they do all their awrads, all their wazifas. Why? Because the whole time of the seclusion was to connect, connect, connect until they're so connected that Allah sends the greater soul into the body. That now this one is trustworthy, this one is in the ocean of taslim, a greater portion of their light can continuously enter into their reality. And we said before in the training they don't need to bring all of that all the time walking around. So then they're trained on turning on and off their binary reality. When it's necessary in their associations they know how to turn their energy on and the greater soul is now coming to them and operating from their soul's reality. Means that their soul is encompassing them and bringing soul's knowledges, bringing the soul's power, not the body and not the lesser soul but the greater soul and the higher consciousness. And that's why they teach from a higher consciousness.
They're teaching from paradise and paradise energies and paradise realities. And as a result as soon as they come into that association that greater soul is moving throughout the association, through the videos, through everything. Wherever people are you, you're dealing with a servant whom brings their soul's power and teaches by their soul and all their realities. And then Allah described them in Hadith al-Qudsi that they did their fad, they approached through voluntary worshipness, this person I hear through his ears, I see through his eyes, I talk through his breath, I breathe through his qudra, I'm the hands in which he touches, the feet in which he moves. And this is Hadith al-Qudsi, so these people online can't say this is not true. It's hundred percent true that it's second to Qur'an in its caliber and its importance. That Allah describing those servants whom operate from the greater soul, they have Allah's hearing, not ears, Allah's hearing as an eternal gift, Allah's seeing, Allah's breath, Allah's tongue upon their tongue. And all this dress what we call Muhammadiyoon because Allah dresses the soul of Prophet and Prophet dresses the Ulul Amr. And as a result they operate from the greater soul, not the smaller light, the greater light. So our life was to listen to the greater consciousness. Then we describe if you don't listen to the greater consciousness what happens? Because like a game, they're sitting up there and say, how come you're not getting your avatar to listen? How, where is it going now? What is it doing now? He's going way off course. But Allah gave the soul a great button. As soon as it presses that button, you become anxious on this earth, something's wrong. Means when the soul is given in a sharat, that your body, the avatar is going astray. What's the sign of that? Anxiety. It's a kill switch coming up from heavens. The soul is upset now with the game, is not playing good in the presence of Prophet and all these uh, awliya and all these saints. They say, how come you can't control your body? He's going all over the place, kill the switch and it begins he tends to press the button an immense anxiety comes upon the physical avatar. So when you're anxious there's something that your soul is trying to communicate and you're not stopping and you're not listening. And that is the danger. Those are the danger signs. Anxiety that comes is come from where? That the soul is sending a signal, not supporting, I'm not sending light. I'm not going to send this energy to you, you're not listening. Most likely you may take the energy and use it in nefarious ways. So immense anxiety is coming, oh nervous. It can become so crippling they can't do anything because they've been cut. Means it's sending every type of warning that you know you're facing immense difficulties and keeps pressing. He has another button. As soon as he activates it, he inflicts depression upon the physicality. So they're anxious, they're worried and then now what becomes their crippling is depression. There's no escape from Allah's command. Allah's commanding, get your avatar in order. There's no escaping Allah however clever you think you are, you see them become famous, rich, everything, they kill themselves. Because they're empty, the soul cut them off, they feel have nothing. And they… Uh, pain to yourself is not only poor people, they have everything, the apex of everything in life and they find no happiness because tariqahs are teaching. Your soul has pressed the button of depression and if it keeps holding that button it wants something from us that stop what you're doing, you're not following the command. You're not following the coordinates in which Allah wanted for you. And those whom Allah guide to the shiyukhs and the guides 
because they guide through malakut and the world of light and they teach you stop, begin to meditate, begin to contemplate, begin to make your zikr so that you can receive the information of your soul. You can receive the coordinates, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. All of these medicines was to reconnect the servant back with their greater reality. Now this is not to say that somebody has physical chemical imbalances, that's something completely different. That they have to take a, a medicine and even if they take the medicine it may not even cure the depression because they still have to do their spiritual practices. You can take physical medicine for certain conditions but it doesn't recover you to be, oh so super fantastic everything's great but they fixed a medical condition they still need to meditate, they still have to figure in their heart, what was I sent upon this earth for? What are the good deeds I'm supposed to do? And then they'll get in their medicine, go out and serve. When you're not feeling good, make someone else feel good. Go out and serve, do your zikr, do your salawats. Take a, a path of meditation and contemplation to connect into these energies. Means the immensity of these realities in which we've been sent upon this earth to connect to the greater reality. So the minor consciousness or lower consciousness, it has to connect with the greater ocean of knowledge and power. Our life's purpose and realities was to achieve that. So that we can submit to what God Almighty wants for us, what actions He wants for us, what energies and destinies He wants for us. And when we begin to feel short on that reality, God's mercy is anxiety and depression. Otherwise He could have left you running into the grave with the wrong coordinates. Allah sends that as a mercy from the Divinely Presence, slow that one down. As soon as they become anxious then they look for guidance, they look for resolution. So it means these are all from the mercy of Allah in the oceans of immense guidance and the immense rahmah of the Divine, the Presence. We pray that Allah on these holy nights that give us an understanding of the world of light and energy, that they read the same Qur'an but they don't understand. They see the same things but they have eyes and they don't see. They have ears and they don't hear. If you live your life from a form and superficial understanding, you miss the greater reality. That if you live your life from a form, we just described how petty and small your form is. It's a piece of flesh with only a drop of your light. But your greater reality and the greater horizon is in the complete soul that's in Divine the Presence. And you want to take your realities from the avatar, has not seen anything, doesn't know anything and say, no that's it, that's the way I understood it, what's that? That's nothing. So imagine your video game, the character turns around and wants to start teaching you. I said, what? Yeah, turn around and start teaching you. I said, what are you talking about, I'm playing you and turn around, now he's, oh, I'm going to talk, talk to you and teach you. It's so petty and so small. It's not the one that was meant to understand the realities, it was meant to be a means in which to connect to your greater reality, the one whom alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. So you have Qur'an, you're not understanding it because they say, where's the proof, Shaykh Dalil, Dalil, the, these internet guys, as if I'm supposed to teach you and sit you down for 25 years to teach you. It's the same Qur'an, what you understood from alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. Alama to who? One to Prophet is a big haqqaiq, is the only one. But Allah said, no, alam al-Qur'an to that one. Allah threw its realities onto the light, alam, every knowledge is in your soul. How could it not be filled with uloom and knowledges if it's sitting in Divinely Presence? Under the nazar of Prophet it's being filled with the knowledges of alam al-Qur'an which has no beginning and no end. 
Then Allah Zawajal khalaq al-insan. Your alam, your knowledge came first. How your knowledge can come first if all we are is a physicality? There must have been a body and a being that Allah taught. Then khalaq al-insan because this is the story. Then Allah said, I'm going to send you on an adventure, I'm going to set you up with a car, you're going to show up and get in that car and go for your ride. He sends only a small part of your light into that body and that's khalaq al-insan. But the one whom you want is alam al-Qur'an. Once you understood that you were the insan, that Ya Rabbi my whole life is that you taught me Qur'an, alam al-Qur'an, let me back into that reality. Then Allah released the technology of a CD. Now it's obsolete, we don't have CD anymore. So when we started teaching that, why? What was the technology teaching? That Allah burned all your information on a disk. Because Allah wanted us to understand from these technologies, Prophet wants for us to understand the technologies. How could you have a device that has all these knowledges, videos, pictures, sounds on a flat surface? And how come you can't flash your flashlight at it so that it would play? It had to be a specific reader with a specific frequency of light that would hit the CD. And as a result of hitting the CD, all the images and sounds and writings were coming out and billions of volumes could be put onto them. How much Allah was, was teaching? I, you're the perfect CD that doesn't expire and doesn't go out of date. Where Allah threw everything onto your soul, everything encrypted and locked with keys. And our whole life was to use a special frequency of light in which we looked into our own heart with our own practices and when we looked and Allah approved of the practice, we were able to send our light back into our soul, into our greater consciousness and then begin to decode all the information that already exists within you. Because in Surat Yaseen Allah describes in this heart, every verse of Surat Yaseen is about this Divinely heart that Allah has created. What was the, the Fulukul Mashhoon that we have created loaded ships? Mashhoon that you're, you're fully loaded, your soul is not created empty, loaded with what? With an infinite ocean of Qur'anic knowledge and, and realities cast into the reality of your soul <coughs> by virtue of that reality it makes your soul to be Hayyul Qayyum. By what Allah is putting upon your light because the real light is Muhammadun Rasulullah but just for us to understand ourselves, the reason your soul has power is because Allah with all of these realities has cast upon that soul, it makes it to be Hay and Qayyum, right? If Allah gives you eternal knowledge, what happens to the dress of your light? If your light is dressed with the knowledges of eternity, your soul becomes high, an ocean of eternity. Light and knowledge in, in the heavens is light, it's, it's not a book, so it's light. Allah is going to give you lights of knowledges, of, of eternal realities. When these lights hit you in abundance, what happens with eternal knowledges? They transform you into an eternal light. When Allah is dressing you from these oceans of eternity, oceans of infinite realities and blessings, infinite lights of Holy Qur'an, what happens then? You become qayyum, that nobody sustains you, 
nobody can extinguish you because Allah's Qudra and Might is powering you. It's not ever ready battery, it's not ever last, it's not an Amazon battery. It's Allah's power is your power. Allah's the one whom is your power, Qayyum. Nothing can turn it off, nothing can turn it on but Allah So you're Hay and Qayyum, Hay you're eternal. So the soul when it came into existence and when it goes not ever in our understanding. You have been as you have always been. When Allah created the souls not on our understanding and when will the souls disappear not in our understanding, it's high. Its power is Qayyum. So high and Qayyum becomes what? Haq, Haq Allah. This light of your soul is haqq. When Allah describes, I created you from haqq, I created this world from haqq. I created, why? Because we're talking about malakut, that it's from the ocean of Hayyu al Qayyum. It's high, it's eternal, and Allah and the world of malakut is the only source of power. The palace in heavens doesn't have a battery or a generator doesn't have a petroleum power plant, so where's the power of the heavens? What's powering the palace? What's powering the angels? What's powering the entire heavenly kingdom? It's Qayyum, there is no power. It's only Allah's Qudra and Might. So it means that I created all this creation as Hayyu al-Qayyum described as Haqq. And that's why they come back and say, well Janab al-Haqq, the real reality of that is that Allah created Muhammadun Rasulullah made his soul to be filled with knowledges. And then Allah described all of Qur'an as a description of Prophet and described this reality is the kawthar, inna ataynaka al-kawthar, that you are the oceans of kathir. You're the fountains of abundance, as a result your soul is high. Your Qayyum because I Allah is the power of your reality. Because Allah is not living and dead, Allah beyond the ocean because anything that has high has my death. Anything has life it has a death. So this ocean of reality is a description of Sayyidina Muhammad Abu Arwah The one whom is the all-encompassing light. Allah takes from that light and makes your soul. Takes from that light, makes the heavens. Takes from that light, makes the arsh. Takes from that light, makes Bayt al-Mahmur and that's a hadith, hadith al-Jabbar. Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah, what was the first thing that Allah created? It was the light of your messenger. Before there was any angel, before there was any Kaaba, there was any Bayt al-Mahmud, there was anything, was the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah We pray that Allah give us the, the oceans of uh, immensity like fountains into the heart to be dressed by these realities and blessed by these realities. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream 
every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.